Hello everyone, I'm Norman Wahlberger. Today I want to carry on with the lecture that we were talking about last time about determinants and sort of an alternate uh, combinatorial interpretation. And in fact, I just got around to almost finishing this problem here. We were looking at this diagonal matrix and I was convincing you that the determinant is just actually the product of the diagonal elements, which in this case is four times three times one times seven which is uh, 12 times 7, which is 84. Okay, so there's a, a kind of a generalization of this. We might write it as a proposition that if A is an n by n diagonal matrix, then determinant of A is the product is the product of the diagonal entries. And the argument is just the same as I've just uh, shown you in that 4x4 four four case. There's a generalization of this to uh, what's called an upper triangular matrix. So uh, I'll just write it down, proposition. If A is an N by N upper triangular matrix and that means ie that means that the ijth entry the ijth entry of of a thing in the ith row and jth column is equal to 0 if i is bigger than j So if A is an n by an upper triangular matrix, which has this property, then again, determinant of A is the product of the diagonal entries. So for example, suppose we have the matrix A, which is 3, minus 1, 2, 4, 7, 5, and it's zeros below the diagonal. Okay, so like this entry here, this is the entry in the second row, first column, it's the 2, 1 entry, and that's 0. This one here, that one is the entry in the 3, 1 entry, that's also 0. This one here, the 3, 2 entry is also 0. Okay, so this matrix here, to find its determinant using the same kind of argument that we had before, that we're basically looking to place rooks on this 3 by 3 chessboard so that uh, we get a non zero product of entries. There's only one place to put the rooks because in the last row, for example, there's only one place where you can put the rook. And then if you put the rook there in the second last row, there's only one place where the rook can go in, which is that one. And in the first row, there's only one place where the rook can go. So those are the only positions uh, possible for three rooks um, so that they're all sitting on non-zero values. Okay. And so therefore, in this case, um, so the determinant of A is just equal to 3 times 4 times 5, which is uh, 60. Now this this is very important because it connects directly with row reduction. Remember that when we row reduce a matrix, we end up getting something in row echelon form and then ultimately in reduced row echelon form. So note that a square matrix in row echelon form is always upper triangular. So this proposition applies and tells us that once we have something in row echelon form, it's determinant is just the product of the diagonal entries. Let me remind you, for example, if we have a four by four uh, situation, uh, maybe, whoops, 
a one there, uh, maybe a two there, and then a one here, three, um, zero, one, four, okay? And then one more row of uh, zeros. So here is a uh, four by four matrix which has been reduced into row echelon form. The leading entries are all staggered successively to the right as we go down. In particular, they all have to be in this sort of top diagonal half of the matrix. Everything below that diagonal is necessarily zero if it's in row echelon form. Now in this case here, uh, it's actually, uh, we can see that the actual diagonal consists of the elements 1, 0, 0, 0. It's in row echelon form and its determinant is necessarily 0. So here the determinant equals 1 times 0 times 0 times 0. We're reading down this diagonal, there's the diagonal there, and that's of course 0. Okay, so those are uh, useful uh, properties. Um, let me give you a few more uh, helpful rules. So another proposition. If A is an N by N matrix with a row or column of all zeros, then determinant of A has to be zero. Okay. So if you have a, a matrix and there is a, say, a row of zeros somewhere, maybe it's a five by five matrix, okay? It's got something here, you know, it's got something here. We don't really care what those things are. It's a five by five matrix, but it has a row of zeros somewhere, it doesn't matter where, or a column of zeros then we can conclude that the determinant of A is zero. And why is that? Well, it's because in the main proposition that I told you way up here, this theorem, okay, this is the alternate kind of permutation form for the determinant. We saw it's a sum of terms. Each of these terms is a product of elements where we're taking elements one to each row. Okay, this, this thing here is something in the first row, that's in the second row, that's in the nth row. So there's one element being taken from each row to form each one of the products, which are then summed up to get the entire determinant with these plus or minus one signs in front. Okay, now if we go back to our situation here, okay, every such sum will correspond to some position of rooks, like maybe this one. Uh, there we go. There was five rooks on this five by five chessboard. None of them are taking each other. And we see necessarily that one of the rooks has to be in that row that consists of all zeros. So every rook configuration has this property. So all of the terms, all of the terms in the, uh, in the determinant will have a zero factor coming from the entry in that row. In that, in this case, third row. So this is a very quick way of telling that uh, a matrix is gonna have determinant zero. It means uh, it's happening when there's a row or column of zeros. And another proposition that's related to this one, proposition that if two rows or two columns of an n by n matrix A are identical, then determinant of A equals zero. 
So for example, say in the three by three case, here's a matrix A, uh, say 0, 4, 3, uh, 1, 2, uh, 5, 1, 2, 5. We see that these two rows are equal. Therefore, we can conclude without any calculation that the determinant of A is 0. And why is that? Well, the reason is because reason adding a multiple of one row to another doesn't change the determinant. That's one of our elementary row operations, and we know how it affects the determinant. It doesn't change it. So adding a multiple of one row to another doesn't change the determinant. But then we can just subtract one row from another. So subtracting one row from another, we get a row of zeros. And hence, from the previous proposition, the determinant is going to be zero. Okay, that's all good. And now I come to the uh, kind of uh, most important uh, fact about determinants in terms of you know, properties. So we can call this a theorem. And it is that if A and B are n by n matrices, then determinant of A times B, the determinant of the product of the two matrices, is equal to the product of the determinants, equals determinant A times determinant B. This is a really a beautiful, a beautiful fact, okay? And it's really this fact primarily which is responsible for the importance of determinants ultimately. It's a somewhat non-trivial uh, fact, okay? Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's a little bit uh, tricky, uh, not at all obvious. Let me give you an example. So let, let's choose some matrices. Let's say two by two. Say so two, one, three, five. And let's say B equals one, zero, minus one, four. Okay, then what's the product? A, B, let's quickly do the product. Two times one plus one times zero is two. And three times one plus five times zero is three. And minus two plus four is two. And minus three plus 20, minus three plus 20 is 17. Okay, so let's calculate the determinants. Determinant of A is 2 times 5 minus 3 times 1. And that's equal to 10 minus 3, that's 7. Okay. And determinant of B, that's actually an upper triangular matrix, so the determinant is just the product of the diagonal elements. 1 times 4, which is 4. And over here, the determinant of AB is 2 times 17 minus 3 times 2, which is 34 minus 6, that's 28. And yes, indeed, 28 does equal 7 times 4. That's a, a very beautiful uh, fact. And perhaps uh, one more uh, theorem that's really important to remember. So uh, the other crucial uh, thing why determinants are important is that uh, n by n matrix A is invertible yeah, precisely when determinant of A is not equal to zero. So that's how we tell whether a matrix is invertible, whether it has an inverse. 
it has an inverse precisely when its determinant is not equal to zero. And, and so in particular, if its determinant is equal to zero, that means it's not invertible. You cannot invert it. Now, both of these theorems are requiring a, a little bit more in-depth uh, look at you know, how to compute matrices, and that's what we'll do in our, our last uh, video. We'll talk about you know, how to compute matrices and the connection with uh, row reduction, and uh, that will also um, allow us to outline at least the direction of, of the proofs of these two important theorems. Okay, but they're uh, very crucial theorems that, that the determinant is multiplicative and that the determinant captures invertibility. Determinant of A is not equal to zero, that's exactly the condition for invertibility.